what's going on everyone i'm back here with another video and today i'm going to be giving you guys my full review of the nikon d5500 dslr camera so yeah let's go ahead and get started so to start this review off uh, i'm going to go ahead and start with the prices uh, and different variations that you can get of this camera <clears throat> so uh, the first variation that you can get of this camera is uh, the body only, which starts at $750. Um, and all, also, all of these prices are currently on sale as of February 1st. Uh, that is the date uh, of the filming of this video. Um, but anyway, moving on, um, you can also get the camera with an 18 to 55 lens kit. Uh, which that runs $850. Uh, and then the third and last version that you can get is the kit that comes with the 18 to 140 lens. And that runs $1,050. So, uh, pretty, a re actually reasonable price considering uh, the type of camera this is and the type of lenses that you are getting. Um, and it also comes in two color variations, so you can get it in both black or red colors. Um, I prefer the black, it just looks more professional, but some people may like the red. So it's nice that they give you that option. Um, so, uh, let's go ahead and now uh, give a tour of the camera itself and the different buttons and everything that it has on the outside. So, uh, let's go ahead and start with the top here, since that's what we're actually looking at. So, uh, first and foremost, you have the hot shoe, which is the mount where you would uh, mount accessories. Uh, and I do have, actually have a current accessory on there, and this is a little bubble level that you can easily get off of eBay for about two bucks, really cheap. But yeah, you have the hot shoes, so you can mount flashes, and anything like that onto it. It's really nice. Let's go ahead and put that back on. Uh, and then you also have your stereo microphones, so it's nice you get stereo audio. Um, right over here. You have your mode dial, which I'll get uh, more in-depth on that uh, later in the video. Uh, then we have our live view toggle, uh, video recording button, our on-off switch, which is around the shutter button, which also the shutter button acts as the focusing as well, so if you hold it down halfway, the camera will focus. Uh, then we have the exposure compensation button, which also doubles as the aperture control button as well. Uh, then we have our little dial right here that allows you to change several functions within the camera um, menu. Uh, let's go ahead and move to the back now. Uh, so we have our screen. Let me go ahead and open that up. Uh, we have our touchscreen uh, LCD display which is 3.2 inches in size. Um, so it's really really nice. Um, it also the resolution it is one o uh, excuse me one, over one million dots, uh, essentially pixels. So it's got a pretty high resolution display, uh, which is very nice. And like I said, it is touchscreen, so it's capacitive, uh, so you can touch it and uh, change settings really quick without needing to use the little directional pad. So that's really nice. Also, um, it swivels in multiple different angles, so you can flip it all the way around to the front of the camera or flip it all the way. Like so, you get multiple different angles depending on what you need, so it's nice. Uh, so that's the screen. Uh, and then we have our menu button here, which gives you access to quick uh, settings. And then next to that, we have our first of two IR blasters, uh, which is used for a wireless remote. Uh, and then we have our viewfinder, which has a replaceable little... Uh, cap on here so if I go like this you push it up as you can see you can remove the little uh, eyepiece cap uh, so you can swap it out for different ones that you would like to do so it's nice that that is in there let's go ahead and push this back down now uh, and then above the viewfinder we have an ambi or excuse me a proximity sensor uh, which is used to turn off the display when your face is near the viewfinder so you don't get any sporadic input into the touchscreen display so that's nice that that has been implemented. Uh, next to that, we have our little dial, so you can adjust the focus of the viewfinder depending on if you wear glasses. Uh, you'll need to adjust that so you can get it more in focus for you, which is good. Uh, and then we have our info button, which basically just turns on or off the info display on the screen. 
um, which is somewhat useful. Um, for me, I don't use it too often. Uh, next to that, we have our auto exposure and auto focus lock. So if you hold this button down, uh, it will lock the exposure and focus in the current position that it is at. Uh, and then down here, we have our picture preview button. So you click that and get a preview of the recently pictures that you've taken. Uh, and then we have our eye button which is used to get quick access to certain settings and functions within the main menu so you don't have to dig through the uh, actual settings menu to get to those settings. So really nice that that's there. That's something that I use quite often. And then we have a nice little grip for your thumb so it doesn't slide around. Uh, and then we have the directional pad uh, so you can um, manipulate the display and get uh, access to certain settings and things like that so you can go left, right, up and down then you have an OK button in the middle to select things. Uh, and then we have our zoom in and out buttons, which are mainly used to zoom in and out on pictures that you have taken uh, to view the uh, focus point and everything like that. Um, th now, keep in mind, these do not adjust the actual focus of the lens itself. Uh, the lens, uh, you have to focus it manually. And there's no digital uh, zooming as well. So you have to, these are not for that. Um, next to that, we have a trash can, which of course is to delete a photo or video. And then we have a little LED indicator light to let you know what the camera is doing. On this side, uh, we have the flash button that you press that and the flash will pop up. And it does have a built-in flash, I forgot to mention, so you, it does have that. Below that, you have a function button, which is programmable. Uh, to be whatever you would like. So right now I have it set to be an ISO button, so I just hold that down and I can adjust the ISO uh, straight away. <clears throat> uh, and then right down here we have some different modes, so you can select the shooting mode from single, servo, continuous, or uh, low and continuous high. Uh, then you have some self-timer modes and remote control modes as well. Uh, and then on this side, let me get that little flap open here. Uh, we have our accessory port, which is used for the shutter release cable and the GPS unit and microphone input and the USB connector, which also doubles as an AC adapter port as well if you want to connect the camera directly to a wall outlet for direct power, which is nice. Uh, on this side, we have another little flap here. Uh, this is the HDM or excuse me, the mini HDMI port. So you can adjust or plug in a mini HDMI port uh, cable to output to an HDTV. Very nice. Then we have our HD, excuse me, um, SD card slot which supports standard SD cards. So you can put either SD, SDHC, and SDXC cards. Uh, the current one I have in there is an SD or SanDisk Ultra. 32 gigabyte, which is actually one I would highly recommend. It's got pretty a reasonably fast transfer speeds, so it's something you really would like to have on a high-end camera. <clears throat> um, and then moving to the front here, we have the lens, of course. Uh, and then over here, you have a little LED light, which is used to focus the camera in low-light situations. Uh, and then we have the a really nice grip, actually. It's really deep inside here, so you can get nice grip on the camera and so you won't drop it and it's patterned quite nice as well it's kind of got like a rubber texture and then also it's hard to see right there you have the second IR blaster like I said for that wireless remote control uh, and then on this side you have the lens release button so if we push that and you turn the lens uh, counterclockwise you can see it releases the lens from the body and you can swap it out and also the mount on the camera is a metal it is not plastic which is very very nice so i'm gonna go ahead and put the lens back on now you just line up the little white dots there there you go until it clicks and you can put the lens back on so swapping lenses on this camera is very very easy uh, and then moving to the bottom um, i currently actually have a, a quick release plate currently attached but underneath this you have a standard uh, tripod mount so you can mount it on a tripod. Uh, and the next to that, we have our battery compartment. So if I open up that, uh, we can see that the battery comes out. And the type of battery is an ENEL14A 7.2 volt, uh, 1230 milliamp. 
which is actually a pretty good battery. Uh, gives you a pretty decent amount of charge. And also you can get up to 820 uh, pictures uh, with a full charge, which is actually really good uh, for a DSLR. So uh, that is basically it of the camera hardware. Um, now, I, I haven't gone over the lens, but I'll do that in just a minute. Um, but anyway, now let's go ahead and move on to uh, camera specs. So let's go over the specs that this camera has. So it is a DX format camera, which means it has a crop sensor. So it's not a full frame sensor um, like some of the more higher end cameras. And what that means is the sensor is essentially smaller than... Uh, a full frame which gives you a more uh, cropped in view through a lens so you're getting a more a narrow field of view than you would on a uh, FX camera which isn't necessarily a bad thing <coughs> um, and uh, speaking of the sensor it is a CMOS sensor on the size is 23.5 millimeter by 15.6 um, so pretty decent uh, sensor as well uh, moving on to the processor, uh, we have built in here Nikon's new X-Speed 4 processor, which is going to give you a pretty substantial increase in speed, So, which is really, really nice uh, compared to the X-Speed 4, which was uh, kind of aging. Uh, and then it also is a 24.2 megapixel, uh, so you have a high megapixel count, so you can get some nice large photos out of this camera, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, the focusing system has up to 39 focus points, which is actually very, very good for an entry-level DSLR. Uh, so to have that many focus points is wonderful. Uh, for those of you uh, that don't know already, uh, once you get this camera and start using it, those 39 focus points will come in handy very, very often. Um, it also has 5 frame per second continuous shooting. Uh, when you have the camera set to continuous high mode uh, at fine JPEG quality. Um, and it'll also get 1 to 3 frames per second in continuous low mode, also at fine JPEG quality. So it's got fairly reasonably fast shooting modes. Not the fastest, but it definitely will get the job done. Um, on to ISO. So the ISO range on this camera is from 100 all the way up to 25,600. Now, to get 25,600, it has to go into what's called expanded mode, which means the camera has to um, bump up uh, the ISO kind of unnatively, which means it's going to introduce a very substantial amount of noise into your images. So it's not recommended to use that 25,600 ISO uh, setting but it is there if you need to use it. Um, on to video. Uh, it can record full HD at 1080p. Now it does not have 4K video recording, which is really unfortunate. That is something that I was really hoping that this camera would offer, but it doesn't, unfortunately. But you do get full 1080p HD video, uh, and you can record 1080p at 60, 50, 30, 25, or 24 frames per second. Uh, which is incredibly nice for those videographers out there. Um, you can also record 720p at 60 and 50 frames per second, as well as VGA at 30 and 25 frames per second. So you got a wide range of different video resolutions that you can choose from for your uh, certain needs. So that's wonderful that that is in there. <coughs> uh, next up, we have the connectivity. So it does have built-in Wi-Fi uh, with 802.11 uh, AC, so you can get some really nice fast Wi-Fi speeds. Um, and essentially the Wi-Fi is to be used with the uh, Nikon wireless utility application, uh, which is used to transfer photos directly from the camera to your smart device. Um, and it also, the app is available for both iOS and Android, for those wondering. So it's nice that it's both for operating systems. Um, it does have built-in sensor cleaning, so if the sensor gets dust or dirt on it, uh, the camera can automatically clean the dust off by itself, so you don't actually have to physically do it manually, which is actually a really nice feature to have. Um, it also has a mirror lockup mode, uh, which is used for live view, as well as manually cleaning the sensor. 
uh, if the automatic cleaning uh, does not work. Um, so those are the main specs. Now these two things here, um, it does not have an internal focus motor, which means you have to purchase a lens uh, that has an internal or a focusing motor built into it. So you cannot buy a lens that is marked as a D because um, those lenses don't have in, uh, focusing motors directly built into them. Uh, so you need to be aware of that when purchasing lenses for this camera. Make sure they are a G type. <clears throat> um, it also does not have built-in GPS, which is something that some people may um, dislike. Uh, but you can easily go and purchase the GP-1A uh, external adapter from either Nikon or a third-party retailer. Uh, so you can easily plug it into that accessory port that I was talking about earlier and easily uh, get GPS functionality um, with ease. And lastly, the camera weighs 4.9 ounces uh, without a lens attached. So that's the body only. So not too heavy. Uh, when you have the lens off, the camera is weighs near next to nothing, which is really incredible to be honest. Um, but when you have the lens attached, it, it does kind of get some weight to it. So if you happen to have the strap on like I do here and you have uh, want to put it around your neck, um, it could end up making your neck sore after using the camera because of the weight. So I wouldn't really recommend doing that very often. Just from personal experience, because I have had my neck kind of become sore after long usage uh, with the strap. All right, so those are the main specs of the camera itself. Uh, so now let's go ahead and I'm going to go over the main specs of the lens. So let's start with the lens hardware. Uh, so it is an 18 to 140 uh, millimeter lens, uh, which has a focal length of 7.8x uh, zoom range. So it's got a pretty decent zoom range on it. Um, it also is a DX lens, of course, because they have a DX camera body. Uh, and it has the AFS silent wave motor, which is wonderful. Um, older lenses didn't have that, but most newer lenses do. And basically what that means is it's, as it says in the title, um, it gives a silent um, function, essentially. Um, it is also internally focusing, so it focuses internally. There is no extension on the top part of the lens, so you don't have any moving parts on the outside, which is very, very nice. Um, and it also is a variable aperture lens, which means that the aperture will change depending on the focal length that you are currently at. So at 18 millimeters, the uh, aperture will be at 3.5 and zoomed all the way out to 140. Uh, the uh, maximum aperture you'll get is 5.6. So it's unfortunate that you get that, but the only uh, way you would not get that is spending several thousands of dollars on a high-end lens, which most beginners can't do or don't want to do. So uh, that's that. Uh, and also the minimum aperture that you can get is f22 at 18 millimeter and f38 uh, at 140. So that's pretty good. Um, it also includes VR2 image stabilization, so you can handhold the camera in really low light situations. And it also includes uh, introduces four stops uh, better handheld camera operation in low light so really really nice um, and also it has a filter size so you can add filters to the front of the lens uh, and the filter uh, thread size uh, excuse me is 67 millimeter uh, so those are the types of filters that you'll need to get for this particular lens <coughs> um, and it also the lens hood uh, which I actually have on here right now is the one you have to get for this lens is the HB-32. Uh, if you get any other lens uh, hood for this particular lens, uh, you will get pretty heavy uh, vignetting, which is something that you really don't want. So make sure to buy the correct lens hood for your particular lens. Um, and also, the lens uses the um, widely available, or widely used rather, Nikon F mount. Uh, which is the standard nowadays. And also, lastly, the lens weighs 17.3 uh, ounces. So combine that with the 14 ounces of the camera body, and you got some pretty hefty weight going on here. Um, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Anyway, so 
those are the main technical specs of both the camera body and the lens. Uh, so now, uh, let's go ahead and turn the camera on and just give a brief overview of the software and certain settings that you can come to expect when purchasing this camera. So let's go ahead and quickly just open up the display so we can kind of get a good view of what's going on. So to turn it on, you just uh, move that little slider over here. Turn it to on, and now we can see the screen is now on. I'm going to go ahead and dim my light here so we can kind of get a better view of the camera. So, uh, this screen that we're seeing here is the uh, standard view that you will see uh, when looking through the viewfinder. And the screen keeps turning off, which is actually really annoying for <laughs> trying to make a YouTube video. But... Uh, as you can see here, we have a bunch of different controls. Uh, on the left uh, side here, we have um, shutter speed, aperture in the middle, and ISO on the right-hand side. Uh, then we have our focus, uh, different focus points, our uh, meter, uh, which is to let you know what type of, if it's too bright or too dark. Uh, and then below that we have all of our different settings we currently have set. So like I said, it is a touch screen. So if you want to change a setting, you just tap on the eye down here and you can see you can change settings easily. So if we want to change the quality, you just hit this here and you can go from JPEG fine or over to raw or you can click it and go back if you would like. So within this menu, uh, since I'm in here, uh, you can change quality um, right here. You can change keeps going off. Uh, you could change uh, image, excuse me, uh, image size from large, medium, or small. Uh, you can change the bracketing mode. HDR, it does have built-in HDR, so you can change the different settings for that, which is nice. Uh, you have active D lighting. Uh, you have your white balance, uh, currently is set on auto, but you can change that manually. And you can manually change the ISO within here as well. <coughs> Uh, and then you have your uh, picture control, your focus mode, uh, which is you have auto servo, uh, single servo, single servo continuous, and then you have manual focus, which really I wouldn't um, recommend using manual focus uh, directly from the camera. I would just use it uh, directly from the lens using the switch. So let me go, I hate this turning off. I'm going to have to figure out how to do this. Um, for future videos so the screen doesn't dim constantly when I'm trying to do this. But anyway, so that's that. And then we have a little question mark down here, which is something that I would highly recommend everyone using because it gives you really, really um, helpful tips for different settings about the camera and different things that are going on. So it's really nice. Uh, and then if we switch over to live view, you can hear the, um, the uh, mirror got locked up to reveal the um, sensor so you can kind of got a mind blank there but reveal the sensor so you can view live view of the what the camera is seeing so essentially live view is something that beginning photographers will be used to uh, if you're coming from a point-and-shoot camera uh, the live view mode will be something that is very welcome um, because it'll be very familiar and um, something that'll just be nice to do um, now, dur uh, talking about the focus points, uh, you can manually adjust the focus points. As you can see, moving the little directional pad, you can see that little red square on the screen moves to w basically wherever you want the focus point to be. And it also um, you has touch to focus. So if you tap over here, the camera will focus on that particular spot. So then we can focus here. There you go. Now it focused on that spot. So that's a very, very nice. Um, then to get back to the center focus point, just press OK on the little directional pad here, and it switches back to normal. And it also does have a touch shutter mode, so if you tap it, as you can see, touching the screen will focus and then take a picture. So that's quite useful. But for me, I don't particularly like to use that all that often. Okay, so... Now that we're going over live view, um, now the way to adjust the aperture, well, starting with shutter speed, you just uh, change a little dial. As you can see, twisting the dial 
uh, will adjust the shutter speed. As you can see, it changes. And then holding down that uh, exposure compensation button, as I said earlier, holding that down while twisting the dial, let's go back out of live view, holding that down um, will adjust the aperture. So you can see I'm holding that down and now the aperture is changing to whatever you would like. And then now holding that function button, as I said earlier, that will change my ISO. So as you can see, adjusting that will adjust the ISO accordingly, which is actually quite useful. <coughs> so those are how you change those particular settings. Now let's go ahead and give a brief look, before I end the video, give a brief look at the um, settings menu so you guys can get an idea of what settings are in here. So you have the playback menu. I'm not going to go over everything with it uh, because there is way too many settings uh, within this to go over. But anyway, we have playback menu so you can see you can scroll through all those different options there. Then we have shooting menu which is where you'll adjust all of your major settings for taking photos. Uh, then we have the custom setting menu where you will adjust autofocus, exposure, timers, uh, shooting, the display, bracketing, flash, and controls. So that's where you do all that. And then we have basic camera settings, which is where you would say, for example, format your memory card, copyright information, beep options, all that good stuff there. Then we have a retouch menu. Uh, this is kind of a fun little thing to mess with. Uh, so you can go in here and adjust retouching for your photos uh, after you've already taken them. And then lastly, we have our recent settings menu, which is something that I use all the time <laughs> because it lets you get quick access to your mostly or most used um, settings. So um, I tend to use Wi-Fi, uh, ISO, and movie settings um, quite often. So it's nice that it has that in there, and I can just quickly get to it without any issues. Uh, so that is the settings menu. Um, one thing I want to go over really quick. Um, within the movie settings is you do have the option of manual movie which is something that is incredibly useful for people that want to use live view so if we turn that on go back out and go into live view if I adjust the shutter speed as you can see adjusting it uh, will dynamically change the exposure so if I adjust the ISO and bump ISO way up as you can see the screen gets or the exposure gets much much brighter which is really, really cool. So that's something that is incredibly useful, and I would highly recommend doing all of that. But anyway, now let's go back out and take a look at the mode dial. So the mode dial has different settings for the different types of photographers, essentially. So if we go up on here and focus in on that, the mode dial has several different uh, settings. So you have manual, aperture priority, uh, shutter priority, program auto, scene, uh, full auto, no flash mode, and then you have effects. So basically full manual is where you will have to adjust every setting of the camera manually. There, the camera will not adjust anything automatically. Um, aperture priority lets you manually um, adjust the aperture, but the camera will automatically change the ISO and shutter speed depending on the aperture that you select. Uh, shutter priority allows you to manually select the shutter while the camera will automatically adjust the aperture and ISO. And then program auto lets you adjust certain things manually uh, but it's essentially still in automatic mode. And then scene, if I switch over to scene, put the flash down, um, on the screen here if we select uh, using the little dial here. Flash keeps going up. But as you can see, we have different types of modes. Let me go ahead and focus in on that. So starting over here on the very far end, we have portrait. Uh, and then we have landscape, child portrait, sports, close-up macro, uh, night portrait, night landscape, uh, party indoor, uh, beach slash snow, sunset, uh, dusk slash dawn, pet portrait, 
uh, candlelight, blossom, uh, autumn colors, and food. So those are the different types of scene modes that you can choose from. Um, I really wouldn't recommend using these. Now, if you're a beginning photographer, I would. I mean, if you want to play around with it, uh, you are welcome to do so. Um, but for someone uh, that would like to use or get the full uh, functionality out of their camera, I would really not recommend using um, the scene modes because it just doesn't give you the full potential of the camera. Now, lastly on the mode dial that I'm going to go over is the effects mode. And within this, you have different effects you can apply to your photos in real time. So you have a night vision mode, which is actually quite interesting. So if we go into live view, as you can see, it kind of gives this black and white effect uh, as if it were doing a um, night vision. Let's go back over here. And then you have super vivid, which will essentially make your photos have really, really vivid colors. And then we have pop, uh, photo illustration, uh, toy camera effect, which is quite interesting, actually. Uh, miniature effect, uh, selective color, which is also a fun thing to play around with. Uh, silhouette, high key, and low key. So those are the different types of effects that you can choose from. Uh, so those are kind of uh, some fun things to play around with. So basically those are all the different settings uh, that you can choose from on the mode dial. So that's pretty much it of the camera. Uh, I feel that I've kind of gone over everything uh, that needs to be gone over. Um, yeah, um, basically, okay, so my thoughts on the camera, um, I would highly recommend it. Um, I have no regrets purchasing this camera whatsoever. Uh, it is a absolutely superb. Um, I really don't have any <coughs> um, issues. So if you guys would like to go out and purchase this camera, I don't think you'd regret it. Um, you'd be it'd probably be a well, well worth purchase. So uh, those are my thoughts <coughs> on this camera. Uh, this has kind of been a long video, but I've kind of gone over um, everything that I feel that should have been gone over or described but yeah basically that's it hope you guys have enjoyed this video uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button right down there greatly appreciated and helps out the channel um, also hit that like button as well uh, that lets me know that you guys are enjoying my videos um, also if you guys have any questions comments need help anything like that about the camera lens whatever it may be drop a comment below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can um, yeah, with that being said, hope you guys have enjoyed this video once again, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.